Praise God, brethren. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Welcome to today's message. It's my prayer that God Almighty will bless us as we look into his word in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please, if you're watching on this channel for the first time and you haven't subscribed or you've been watching before, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, The Narrow is Christ for All Nations. And don't also forget to like and comment and share this video with others so that this message can also get to other people too. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our topic for today is a unique one. Our topic is once and for all. What is once and for all? As we get into the message, you will understand better. Let us pray. Mighty King, we thank you. We appreciate you. We adore your holy name. Thank you for yet another day. Thank you for another opportunity to hear from you. We ask the Lord God that you open our ears, open our, our, our hearts, help us to understand truly. Lord, we are passing through this world once and for all. We are not coming back here again. Lord, please help us so that we can fulfill our destinies. Help us to fulfill our purpose of being here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you give us listening ears. Give us obedient hearts. And push us. Wake us up. Pull us along. Carry us, Lord. And finally, draw us closer. And carry us on ego wings that until we rest in your bosom you will not give up on us in jesus name we pray amen so the topic of today is once and for all this is the topic the lord gave to me for those of you who may not know each time i preach i ask the lord what do you want me to talk to your people and I take my time listening to the Lord. And he tells me, okay, you tell them this. Talk about this. Talk about this. There are times he will give me the scriptures I am to talk about. And today, he did the same. He told me, this is what I want you to share with my children. This is not the message that you may want to hear, but this is what the Lord wants you to hear. This message is not just for you alone, it is for me too. I am the first, I am my first audience. I listen to my messages. When I preach, I preach to myself. So it is not just to you alone, it is for me too, because the same way you are passing through this world, that is the same way I am passing through this same world. So I need to hear the same thing. The fact that God uses me to deliver a message doesn't mean that I am exonerated. No. So I want you to take it seriously. Let's look at the test. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Therefore, whatsoever thy hand Find that to do, 
do it with thy might. Anything your hand finds to do in this world, do it with thy might. Do it with thy strength. Don't just do it with, don't hold it with levity. Don't hold it with unseriousness. Don't attempt it with doubt. Attempt it with your strength. Hold it firmly. Pursue it. Do it with all your might. If you look at successful people in this world, I'm not talking about those who inherited their wealth from their parents. I'm talking about those who were nobody. And they decided to grow from the scratch. If you look at their lifestyle, you will discover that even at the peak of their success, they don't even sleep the eight hours. Medical personnel say we should sleep. Every adult should sleep minimum eight hours. They don't even spend eight hours. As early as 4, 5 p.m., they are already awake. Some 3, I mean, a.m., as early as 3, 4, 5 a.m., they are already awake. They work so hard. Look at people like Elon Musk. He works so hard. Imagine the big inventions and the number of companies he is managing. How is he able to manage all these things? It's a question I ask myself several times. They work so hard. A lot of times I use this word to encourage myself, especially when I'm overwhelmed with work. I tell myself, I'm not here to leave. I'm here to work. I'm not in this world to leave. I am here to work. Live, L-I-V-E. The expression of leave means I'm not here to live like every other person. I'm here to work vigorously so that I can have a reward. I'm here to work. I'm not just here to live past my days in this world, no. We are passing through this world once and for all. Remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man haven't found himself in the place of torment forever. He begged Abraham, he said, send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. When he saw that it was impossible, when he saw that there was no chance because there, there is a chasm, a deep bottomless pit dividing between heaven and hell. When he saw that, okay, I am doomed forever, he made a request. He said, send someone to go and warn my brothers. He was told that it's not possible. There are people there. They should listen to those people. There are prophets, there are evangelists, there are teachers. Let him listen to them. If it were to be possible for him to return and correct his mistakes, he would have accepted it. Once and for all, we pass through this world. We are not passing through this world a second time. We are passing through this world once. And after that once, we are not going to pass through again. It is just once, and it is once and for all. We are passing through this world and at the end of the journey, we will give accounts. We will not get to a point and then we'll say, oh, I actually made some mistakes when I was a baby, 
when I was a child. Let me go and ratify them. And then you rewind the hand of time backward and go to maybe 1960. It's not possible. So I want to point out four things to us as far as this message is concerned. Number one, time is deceptive. The time you have, the time I have, is very, very deceptive. The time that is available to every single one of us is deceptive. Number two, time on earth is short. This year, last year, October, I became 40 years old. 40. For someone who lives 80 years old, to everybody, he spends his time well. That means if I am to go by that, I have spent half of my years in this world. When people celebrate their birthdays and they say, I am plus one today, it is wrong. You are not plus one, you are minus one. Because assuming God gives you 100 years to spend in this world, and you have spent 50, if you finish one, assuming you were 49 and you finish another year, and you become 50, it is not plus one. It is minus one. You just consumed one year. You have consumed 50 years. So when people say I'm plus one today, I'm plus one, it is deception. That is a deception of time. We think we have more years. We think it is a plus. It is not a plus. It is a minus. I know we have to thank God for a new year. For helping us to start a new year. But a lot of times we forget that we just finished one year. <laughs> when I became 40, there are questions I ask myself. A lot of people say life begins at 40. And I know there are things that started in my life at 40. And at this 40, I must take life seriously. If there are areas I wasn't serious, I must be serious. 80 years to some people, but when they are like a child or youth, they think 80 years is, is so much time. And let me tell you, meet people who are 80 years old and they have strength, they are strong, they are alive, they have good health. Meet them in their place of prayer, praying against death. You will know that they are not even ready to die at 80. My mom became 80 years old, January 1 this year, 2024. She became 80 years old. I was telling her, I said, Mom, you are getting old. You are 80 years. She disagreed with me. She disagreed with me. She said she has so many years ahead of her. And each time I've noticed her, each time I tell her, you are getting, you are old. She will say she is not old, she is getting old. If I say you are old, she said, no, I'm not old. I'm getting old, even at 80. Maybe the strength she has deceives her. Because my mom rides bicycle, she is this strong. People think that 80 years is a lot of years. People think 60 years is a lot of years, but it is not a lot. Why is it that those who are 80 years old and above still look for more time? It is because even though they have just consumed 80 years, they think it, it's, it's just too short. It has the truth. What is a year? It is 300 
and 65 days. That's a year. It's just 365 days. That's a year. Some of us think that we can procrastinate and procrastinate and, and then one day we'll just wake up and do everything at once. No. <laughs> Time is deceptive. The next thing I want to talk about, I want us to know is that Time is irredeemable. Time. Time lost can never be redeemed. If you lost years to sickness, you can just, you can only try to meet up, meet up, just hurry up. But the truth is that you can't go back to the years gone and leave them or live in them. You can only live in today and hope to live in tomorrow and subsequent days. But if I tell you that we only have now, we don't even, we are not even sure of the next moment. We are not sure. Jesus could return even now. We could die. We are not sure of what is coming. We walk by faith and not by sight. We are not sure. We are living by faith. We are not sure of what is going to happen the next second. We are only sure of now. Yesterday was ours and we used it. Whether using it well, spending it well, or not. It was us. So long as we are alive today, we can boast of yesterday that, yes, it was us. When we wake up, have a new day. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this good day. Thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. We appreciate God because we've seen a new day. And the very moment we have belongs to us. But the hours we haven't reached, we are not sure if we will have them or not. And when we fail to make the best use of our time, or when we fail to make the use, make use of our time at all, then we should be ready to face a repercussion. The repercussion, the number one repercussion is that we will never redeem the lost time. It is gone and it is gone forever. I wish I can go back to the time of my youth. How I wish I can go back to being a child and correct some of the mistakes I made. I've asked a number of people that imagine yourself having the rare privilege of becoming a child, going back to your childhood age, but the difference is that you're going to retain all the experiences or the knowledge or the wisdom you have. Will you go back? Most people tell me I will go back. Why? Because each and every one of us made some mistakes. Some of them are mistakes that can never be corrected. There's someone in my family I used to tell, please go to school, please go to school. Even at the time, I offered to pay this person's school fees. This person refused to go to school. Now it is time for the person to make use of the education. This person is regretting every day, but that time is gone. When you have family and you want to go to school, it's not the same when you are youth. When your brain is still young, you can learn so fast, you haven't learned wrong things. 
and it's easier for you to learn the right thing. Let's look at the number fourth. The number fourth is our time on earth is accountable. We will give account of every second we spend in this world. And we will give that account to God. Now, these are the four things I want us to know today. Well, let's look at some Bible verses. Before we go to some Bible verses, are you aware that you are here for some specific assignments? The question is, are you using your time to carry out those assignments? Or are you among the millions, the multitude, that have been distracted and are pursuing frivolous things instead of finding out what they are here for and pursuing it to attain their goal. Are you here to waste your days? Are you here to enjoy? Or you are here to fulfill a destiny? Time is short. Are you actually counting your days? When I became 40, this my last birthday, I spent some time with God. I said, now I'm 40 years old. There are things I need to hear from God. I need to, I need to think about my life. How is the next phase of my life going to look like? Let's look at Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Hmm. The time to number days is a time to apply wisdom. When people think they have all the time, when people think they have all the days, it could be deceptive. They could be deceiving themselves to think that they have all the time and all the days. They have every time. A wise student starts reading even before school resumes. A wise child starts studying even during the vacation period. But the foolish ones, they start reading when they have announced the date of exam. That's wrong. We're supposed to be attentive. We're supposed to be attentive and ask ourselves, how am I spending my time? Am I wasting my days? And we listen to ourselves. If Listen, there are times you need to be attentive to yourself and tell yourself the bitter truth. Some of you listening to this message right now may be old, maybe about 50, about 60 or 70. Remember a message I preached some time ago, the grace to die. We don't just need the grace of God to live, we also need the grace to die. And when we need to die, when our time comes, we should die well. We shouldn't die like every other person. We need the grace of God to die well and not die like a criminal. Sometimes some people want to die. They eat food, take their bath, call their children and bless them and tell them, I'm going to see the Lord. They lie down and then they say goodbye. And the next thing, dear God. Well, that's good. What about those who will never receive any information about their departure? What about those people? Whichever way God wants us to live, we need grace. 
So for those of you who are older, if up to now you were not asking yourself, have I fulfilled my purpose? Am I fulfilling my purpose? The remaining days for my life, how am I using it? The years I've spent, I can't go back and begin to leave them again and correct my mistakes and do the works I should have done that I never did. If you are not asking yourself these questions, then it is wrong. You better start asking yourself now. There are things you can correct and there are things you cannot correct. For the things you can correct, I beg you to start correcting them now. Those of you who are younger, although that's not a guarantee that you're not going that you're going to live very old. Even me that is talking to you, I have no idea of when I'm living. You have no guarantee that you're going to live for 120 years. We don't know when the Lord is going to come. So when we have the time, let us use the time well. Because time is deceptive. Jesus Christ said in John chapter four, chapter 9 verse 4, John 9 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus was very conscious of his time. He knew time is deceptive. Jesus knew how deceptive time is. And he said, I must work the work of him who sent me while it is there because the night is coming when no man will be able to work. And he said, why so long as I'm in the world, I am the light of this world. Are you thinking, are you among those who are thinking? That we have so much time. That time cooperates with us. We are the ones to cooperate with time. Sometimes there is this when we used to go to the farm in the evening over here, we see the sun shining, then we we were not going to farm with wristwatch, no clock, no phone. We look at it, how do we used to look at the time? We look at the sky, we look at the sun. And in the evening, about five, there are days the sun would come so bright. And then we would say, oh, we have time. We have time. Before we knew it, boom, we see darkness coming. And we get deceived by the sun. Because we have no clock. This is how some people behave. They think they have all the time in the world. But at the end, they discover that they have been deceived. Then again, our time is irredeemable. Our time in this world, let us know that the time lost cannot be redeemed. But if you have made some mistakes you can correct, go ahead and correct them now. There are some assignments that we may fail to carry out. And then we can go back and do them again. There are others, when we fail them, we have no opportunity to go back and carry them out again. So we have to know that there are things we can redeem out of the past. There are things we cannot also redeem. So therefore, let us know 
that so long as we have the time, let us do the best we can. Mm -hmm. Stop procrastinating. If the Lord is giving you a message to give to someone, go ahead and deliver it. If the Lord has given you an assignment, go ahead and carry it out. If the Lord has called you into any particular ministry and gives you an assignment, don't fail to do it. Procrastination sometimes could be really, really bad. Sometimes the Lord lays messages in our hearts and then we fail to do it. I remember last year, I had this pressure in my mind to call a woman. So I said, well, it's late in the night, but I still need to call her. So I called her. And she told me that, oh, man of God, I have been contemplating suicide. Since morning, I haven't eaten anything and I have stomach ulcer. I have just been indoors. I haven't gone out. I have no money. I can't feed. My business have collapsed. Things are hard. In fact, I have been contemplating how to end it all. <laughs> Do you know what would have happened if not that I obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit to call her? That same evening, I said, well, help is here. I gave her money. After that, I gave her money to start her business. She resumed her business again. When you hear from the Lord, do not say, oh, I'm going to do it later. No, go ahead and do it. Time is irredeemable. Then lastly, our time on earth is accountable. Our time is placed on a scale. And we will give account of every bit of it. How we spend the years. How we use the time God has given to us on earth. We are going to give accounts of everything. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he had done, whether it be good or it be bad. We will all give accounts of everything we have done. Whether it be good or it be bad. We are passing through this world once and for all. That is a reminder for today. Once and for all. And after we pass through, we are not coming back here again. There is no reincarnation and the work we have done during the period of our passage, during the period of our pilgrimage, the work we have done, we are going to reap whether it be good or bad. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We worship you. We give you praise. We adore your holy name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for speaking to us. Father, help us to number our days. Help us to number our days correctly so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In any way, you have called us to be active, to be useful. Lord, help us to be active and be useful in that regard in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to hear one thing from you. Well done, good and faithful servant. 
This is our desire. This is our desire. Lord, do it for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rebuke every power of the devil. We rebuke every thief of time. We rebuke every power of destruction. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke losses. We rebuke every robbery. We rebuke death. We rebuke every kind of ill that will come to distract us from carrying out our assignments in this world, from fulfilling our days in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I pray for as many who have been supporting our ministry. Release your blessings upon your lives. Take away hardship from your lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this message and also subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you can receive the message. You receive the alert of the message anytime we post any video. Thank you and God bless you. Don't forget to share this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.